Yo, what's going on y'all? Welcome back again to a brand new video. My name is Angelo from Cosmos Inc. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you all how to convert the Epson EcoTank 2760 into a fully functioning sublimation printer. So before we dive into this video, of course, there are three things I need y'all to do for me. Number one, hit the subscribe button down below. That way you all will be notified whenever I post new content. Number two, we are the owners of Cosmos Inc. So if you need any type of sublimation ink, especially what we'll be using in this video, hit the link down below. We'll get it sent out to you through our website. And last but not least, please, please, please come join our Facebook group. Click the link down below in the description. As soon as you hit it, it'll redirect you to our Facebook group. And once you're in there, we do things like tutorials. We do giveaways. You can showcase your artwork you can showcase the items you press if you need any help people are more than willing to help you in the group so please be sure to hit that link down below to join our group so now that we got all that out the way we are going to go ahead and dive into converting this printer so before we do that there are a couple things mainly just one thing that i want y'all to know in this video even though it's titled how to convert the Epson 2760. Please know that the 2760, 3760, 4760, 2720, 3720, and 4720, those are all converted the same way. So you don't have to go out and find um, different videos for those, dif for those different Epson EcoTank models because they're all pretty much the same printer. They just have more capabilities um, the higher up as far as in the numbers you go, but with the 2760 and the ones that I just uh, talked about, those are all, those will all be converted the same exact way. So if you have a different style Epson EcoTank printer that I just talked about, just watch this video, the screen and everything is going to be exactly the same, right? So that's it with the talking. We're going to go ahead and dive into the tutorial. So now we are ready to convert the printer, but first let's go over a few different items that you're going to need to turn this printer into a fully functioning sublimation printer. So of course, the very first thing you're going to need is the printer itself. And like I said earlier, you can use the 2760, 3760, 4760, 2720, 3720, and the 4720. They're all converted the same exact way. All the buttons of the screen are the same. If you have any one of those models, you can use this video to convert those models as well. Secondly, you are going to need your sublimation ink. And like I said earlier, we are the owners of Cosmos Ink. So we have our own line of sublimation ink right over here. All right. And these are the four bottles that you will need. Of course, I will put that down in the description below for you to click on the link to go to our website to get it. And then last but not least, we have our Craft and Besties eight and a half by 11 sublimation paper. All right. I highly, highly, highly recommend this paper. I'd like above everything else, I highly recommend this paper. So if you all want to show them some support, you all will click on the link down below in the description to click on their link to get their paper and they'll have it sent out to you as well. All right. So now that we got those three things out the way, we're going to go ahead and bust open the box. I can show you all the contents inside and then we'll go from there. So now that we took everything out of the box, as you all can see, it only comes with four different items. That is going to be your printer, your power cord, your instructions, and your ink right up here at the top that you are going to discard. Do not put that ink inside the printer because it is not sublimation ink and we are converting this printer into a sublimation printer. So from here, you can just take these bottles and you can store them somewhere or if you have another Epson Eco Tank that take model 502 bottles, uh, model 502 Epson ink, then you can put that ink within that printer, but it has to take that 502 model. So from here, um, let's cover the plastic. The reason why this plastic is on here is because when you look at the box, you see how it has this handle right here on the side, this open handle on this side and on the other side and sometimes um the boxes may be punctured where water and moisture can get within the box so they wrap it up in this uh plastic just to keep that water and keep that moisture away from the electrical components 
of the printer so from here we're going to go ahead and take that plastic off i'm going to show you all the tape where the tape should be at and how to go about removing the tape so from here now that we got the plastic off we're going to go ahead and remove all the pieces of blue tape that we can find on the printer it is extremely important to be very thorough with this process because some of the tape may be on moving parts and the last thing you want to do is plug your printer in the printer head tries to move or a different part tries to move and that tape is restricting its movement and now you have a bigger issue because it could potentially break your printer so to avoid that we're going to thoroughly go over this entire printer and take off all the blue pieces of tape so first on the top you have this piece of tape and i'm going to turn it up so you all can see it So that piece of tape was over there. You have this one, which is on the other side. We can flip it back down. Take this one off. This one. Most of them you're going to be able to see on the outside, but other ones you may have to open it up to really get inside to take off the other end because it may be wrapped around going inside like this one right here on the side so this one right here this one's pretty easy but this one this one you really got to get you have to open up your the top of your printer and then if i turn it to the side you'll see how that piece of tape right here is wrapped around the printer head and that's to just keep it in place during the uh, shipping process when it leaves the manufacturer and it finally gets to the customer they don't want that bumping all around and stuff because it could really um pretty much just kill your printer so we're going to go ahead and get this piece from over here in this corner pull it up over pull it down and then it'll come right out From there, we can turn it around to the back. Take this piece off. This one. Lift up. And take this piece off as it is going around into the inside. So from there, I recommend pinching these two things right here and this is just in case if you have a paper jam and you need to get access to that jam you can pinch those to open up the printer and take out the paper that's jammed up and then put it back on so for us we're just going to open it up just to be sure that no tape is on the inside i'll take that off no tape and then when you push it back on you have to pinch this in or before you push it in don't just push it in because when you pinch this this piece right here on the side is going to fold in so that will allow it to go back into the printer so pinch it push in gonna spin it around to the front lift up the scanner lift this part up nothing else is in there so now we are good to go to the next step which is going to be putting the ink inside the tanks so right before we dive into putting the ink inside the printer i want to go over this key mechanism that is on the original epson eco tank bottles and why that mechanism is important pretty much on their end but not on our end so when you open up your cosmos ink bottle and you open up the epson eco tank bottle when you look at the tops they're gonna look a little different and you see right here how it has these grooves on this side and this side and then this one doesn't this one's pretty much um there you go this one is pretty much flat that's because epson don't want you to uh make a mistake and put let's say your black inside of your yellow channel or your yellow inside of your cyan channel so they put that um those grooves 
on the top of this bottle so that way when you go to refill your printer or fill your printer for the first time this black with this specific top will only fit down on top of your black channel same thing with your cyan is going to be shaped different up here that will only go into your cyan same with your yellow same with your magenta well on our bottles they are keyless and I like the keyless functionality of it because if you have another printer that don't take 502, like let's say you have one that takes a 774 or take a different model eco tank bottle, there's a high chance that this part, the grooves on the side are going to be different, but the part that's going through the middle, like right there through the middle of the bottle is going to be the same as far as this part. So that way this bottle can fit down on top of um, different model eco tank Epson printers that don't take 502. They take another type of bottle if that make any sense. All right. So now that we got that out the way. Next up, what we have to do is we have to puncture the top. Well, puncture the seal that's underneath the cap on the bottle. So you can just twist this top off. You can take some scissors or keys or whatever you got and just puncture that hole. I recommend making it a little bit big, a little big or almost as big as the top because um, it has to flow out pretty good. So I recommend making that almost as big as you possibly can. Um, that's big enough. So from here, we just put our cap back on it and we have to screw it down. I say pretty tight. And that's just to stop ink, stop ink from leaking out the sides, like right around here in this area. So from here, you just lift up your printer like so right here. And then you lift up this piece. And I'm going to show you all what I was talking about. I'm going to have to lift up the camera. So when you are putting your ink inside the printer, you're going to lift up the channel you want to put your ink in, grab that corresponding bottle, and then you're going to put it down on top of here. That key mechanism that I was just talking about earlier, you all see those grooves down in there like it cuts through right here and then it's wide up here at the top same thing down here it's kind of like go this way and then it's wide that's so the grooves on the other bottle can go in well on these bottles since it's just this middle part it slides only through the middle so now all you do is take your bottle you put it on top of that part right there Press down, and then the ink will start going inside of the tank. And you can honestly hear it. It sounds like somebody's drinking something. So yeah, you can definitely hear it. So from here, you just repeat that process for your black, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And then after that, we'll go into the next step. So once you have all your ink inside the printer from here, all you want to do is just close it up, wipe off any uh, leakage that you may have from your bottles from, you know, just turn it upside down. There was a little bit of ink may come out. You honestly can just wipe that up with a napkin or with an alcohol wipe or, you know, just something like that. So from there, that's clean. We can lift this up, bring this part down, close the top. Turn it around. 
and plug your power cord in right here in the back then plug it in the wall and then we'll go from there so now that we got it plugged in all we're gonna do is press this power button right here off to the side it'll turn on and then we just go through the prompts so I'm gonna pull it a little bit closer so you all can see it a little bit better so from here all we do for language we just press OK on our common language which of course for me is gonna be English so we just press OK for English and then it'll start preparing so this process it normally can take a few seconds to a few minutes um, if it's a longer process it's gonna let you know on the screen hey this may approximately take you know such and such minutes and then you just have to sit back and wait for it but for the most part it's a pretty speedy process so a little like this is taking a second so oh there we go so now it says see the start here sheet to complete initialization so from here all you do is I want to say you press OK. Yep. And then you fill the tanks up. Of course, we already filled the tanks up. And that's what I like to do. I like to fill it up um, before I even plug the printer in. So since we already did that, all we do from here is just press the question mark and hold it down for three seconds. And then from here, if you did not put the ink in your printer and you want to get a better understanding of how to do that, you can press the OK button in the middle and it'll walk you through step by step on the screen on how to fill your printer with the ink. But since we already covered that, there's no need for us to view that. So from here, all we do is just hit this diamond button right over here in the corner. And then there you go. Like I said earlier, if it takes a minute for it to um, go through, or well, I'm sorry, if it takes a while for it to set up, it's gonna let you know on the screen, hey, this will take approximately, you know, X amount of minutes long to get everything set up for you. So from here, all we do is just sit back and wait, and then I'll just fast forward through the video or pause the video and then unpause it once we get through this little 10 minute uh, initialization process. So after about 10 minutes, the initialization process will be complete. All you do is just press the OK button when you see that screen. And then on the very next screen, it'll say align the printer to get the best print quality. I just go to adjust later. To be honest, this printer is brand new, fresh out the box. So you should not have to adjust the printer head. So just go down and select adjust later. Then after that, it'll say, OK, that's fine. If you ever need to adjust your printer head alignment later, you can do so by going to the maintenance setting on the printer. After that, I like to go ahead and print out a nozzle check just to be sure everything is properly working on the printer. So first, I got to scroll over to our maintenance tab, which is right here. We'll press OK. Nozzle check. We'll hit OK. And it'll ask you to load a uh, letter size paper in the rear feed of the printer. So pretty much what it means by rear feed, and I'm gonna lift you guys up for a minute, is this area right back here. This flap, this opens up. When you very first open up your printer, these two are gonna be pretty much pushed together like that. You'll just pull it to the side to separate it. And then this piece is gonna be tucked down like this. You'll just pull it out and push it back and that's what holds your paper in place. So from here, just wanna grab your paper and when you put your paper inside the rear feed, please make sure that the side you wanna print on is facing the front of your printer. In our case, Craft and Bessies have their logo right on the back of the paper. So we don't wanna print on this side, we wanna print on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that down in there and then we will go ahead and print. On the screen, you can just press OK on this part. We'll press confirm or actually no. In our case, 
since not all papers print the same all papers are different qualities some papers have you know chemicals on it that can absorb more ink than other papers personally i like those type of papers because it's absorbing more ink and if the paper has a very very high release rate it allows for darker colors onto you know whatever substrate you're going to be pressing so for our case we're going to come down to change press ok for uh, paper size we're going to stay with letter because that's what this is eight and a half by eleven and then for paper type we're going to go all the way over until we see prime matte Premium matte is the same exact thing as premium presentation matte. Once again, I don't, I don't really recommend that for all papers because not all papers are going to be able to absorb that amount of ink that's going down. However, I've tested Craft and Besties. I've tried it through and through. This paper definitely can absorb that amount of ink that's being laid down. So from here, you'll just press OK. And then press OK to be done. And then you go down and press the diamond button to print. And so that is going to print out our, our uh, nozzle check. And that will let us know if everything is OK. If so, then we can go to the next step. And right here for the most part it seems like we are good there is as you can see one little piece missing in our magenta but honestly you can run a printer head cleaning and that will clear that up if that do not clear it up you can wait 24 hours and then print another nozzle check and nine times out of ten that always fix the problem all right so we are good with this we will just push this back in, zoom in, and then we will go to our next setting, which is going to be our Wi-Fi setting. So to get there, all we do is just hit the back button right here. Oh, never mind, I hit the back button. It's asking us, hey, are there any missing segments? We can say yes, but for this sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna say no, and we can do that, you know, maybe later. So go over to up oh, nope hit back again then we'll go over to wi-fi setup we'll press ok once we're in wi-fi setup we'll do wi-fi recommended press ok and then it says you can print wirelessly from computers and devices via wi-fi i'll say yeah proceed wi-fi setup wizard press ok And then it's searching for your wireless networks. So, as a um, not necessarily a rule of thumb, but as a full disclaimer, every Epson printer that I've worked with so far can only connect to the 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi Fi channel. So, you need to make sure that your computer is also connected to that 2.4. If your computer is, is connected to the 5 gigahertz channel, but your printer is connected to the 2.4 it won't be able to find your network on the it won't be able to find your printer on the network because they're not both connected to the same exact frequency on that network so make sure that your printer and your computer are both connected to the 2.4 gigahertz so once you see 2.4 on your screen or you see whatever name of your wi-fi is on your screen you'll press ok and then you'll go ahead and put in your password once it's connected, that'll be it. So that's it. We have it. We have officially converted an Epson EcoTank 2760 into a fully functioning sublimation printer. And like I was saying earlier, the 2760, 3760, 4760, and the 2720, 3720 and 4720 and possibly a few more of the Epson EcoTank models, they are all going to be converted the same exact way. And as far as the physical side, we're pretty much done. Part two, which is gonna be right after this video, is gonna be stuff on the technological side because when we're dealing with sublimation, especially when it comes to color matching, there's gonna be some settings and stuff that we'll have to tweak on the computer. 
all right so i'm gonna show you all how to download the drivers and how to access those different settings to be able to match our colors with our screen versus our colors that are on our substrate once we finally press it so that pretty much wraps up part one of this video thank you all for tuning in please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our channel secondly we are the owners of cosmos inc so if you need any type of supplementation ink for your business or for your hobby just hit that link down below as well and last but not least please be sure to join our facebook group i'll have that link down below as well too so that's it i will see you all in the next part which will be part two angelo out